What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. Apple has just released iOS 17.3 and watchOS 10.3 for the public. For those of you that follow the channel, you probably already know what is coming in both these builds, but in order to stay clear and concise with all of the updates and changes in here, I wanted to go ahead and do this quick video to show you guys what is new in iOS 17.3 and watchOS 10.3. Spoiler alert, there's like three tentpole items on 17.3 and on watchOS 10.3, there really is not too much here aside from better performance, battery life, and the new wallpapers. So let's go ahead, jump right into this and show you guys what's new. Make sure to thumbs up this video, subscribe to the channel. Let's go. So starting off with iOS 17.3, jumping right into this, if you go into settings and then face ID and passcode, and get signed in. One of the big features here is stolen device protection. And here it is, this is where you're gonna find that. As you can see here, it says this adds another layer of security when iPhone is away from familiar locations, such as home and work. Face ID is required to access certain data and a delay prevents quick changes to security settings. Learn more about stolen device protection. You can click on that link to do that. If you want to turn it on, you can simply click it and it does activate it. If you want to turn it off, you will be prompted for your face ID. And as you can see, it turned it right back off. If you are not in a known location, that would not be the case and you would have to wait. That is obviously one of the bigger changes that Apple's advertising here. However, not anything substantial. A lot of us will probably worry about that really only helps if somebody got your phone and your passcode. Aside from that, one of the other fun ones is now Apple Collaboration Playlists. And again, this was actually in prior betas, but it was pulled from 17.2. It is now back in 17.3 and will be officially released. What you need to do is go into Apple Music, go into any of your playlists. And if you have one already created, you can obviously just use that one. If you want to add a playlist, so say for instance, December 23, if you actually click on it and you want to start a collab playlist with this, you can use the little person up here with the plus sign. And you can see it says invite people to join. And all you'll need to do is say start collaborating or you can toggle on that you can have the right to approve collaborators as well. If you don't want to do it that way, you can click on the ellipses over here and then click collaborate and it pulls up that same exact menu. When you actually have one all set up, and I believe this one is, you can see how it is all shown who has added what song so it has my logo right there next to the sound or next to the song itself download it whatever you want to traditionally do see your credits etc etc you can favorite it create your stations nothing new or different there if you have somebody else as part of this collaboration playlist they have the option to add emojis to the songs if they like it they can thumbs up it heart it anything you can traditionally do with an emoji should be here uh, just in a limited version as well and then once it is a set playlist for a collaboration, you can either share your invite link or a, co uh, a QR code in order to let people join this. Again, you have that same option to approve collaborators or not, or if you want to stop it, you can simply hit stop and get greeted with that message to confirm you want to stop or not. You also will get a new notification now when you go into cameras. And if you go into video and in a landscape orientation, that option to do spatial video with that symbol right there for the Apple Vision headset. This does have a new splash screen. Even though this video recording is not new, you will see that alert as well. It is again restricted to 1080p at 30 frames per second. Just keep that in mind. And then probably one of the newer ones that was just added in the RC build, you now have those new Unity wallpapers that they're calling. It is a Unity Bloom. And this is actually pretty neat. We didn't notice this in the RC because we didn't utilize it enough. This is actually somewhat dynamic of wallpapers. So what I mean by that is you can see when it locks, where these symbols are and flowers, I guess you can call it. But when you unlock it and then relock it, they move around. So it's actually pretty neat. It's not a static image. Let's unlock it. You can notice on the actual wallpaper itself on the home screen. Let me go to a page that doesn't have so many icons. Um, you can see where there's like a flower here. If you lock it, it's not here anymore. And then when you go to unlock it, it shipped it around. Pretty neat, well thought of right there. Now, 
That is pretty much it for 17.3. It is not one of the most exciting upgrades unless you're excited for those couple of new features we talked about. Same goes for watchOS 10.3. It is even more limited than what 17.3 offers. So going right into this, there is really not a ton of new features here, unfortunately. We will go ahead and start with the same Unity wallpaper that we just talked about being on this watch itself. And you can see exactly how it matches the actual iPhone wallpaper. I will add that there are two versions of this though, and I'm just gonna do it on my iPhone to make it easier for you. The Unity Bloom right here, you can have two styles, a single bloom or the full bloom you saw. If you do utilize full bloom, it does not give you the options to use any compilations, unfortunately. But if you use a single bloom, you can do up to four on all different corners, just depending on what you wanna do. We'll just say alarms, audiobooks, rings, and let's do air quality. So you can see how that would look. And as usual, obviously you can change your colors to however you would like. That's the most exciting change for watchOS 10.3 that just got added. Now I will say I have had great battery life with 10.3. And if you guys follow the channel and would have watched our other videos, you would see that even though there was no new features added for Double Tap, it has gotten substantially more reliable. There's three out of three clicks there. And then if you wanna rotate fingers, it does work that well. Um, that's a definite improvement from what Beta 3 had and even uh, watchOS 10.2. So I'll definitely take it. Battery life obviously is the more important aspect here. It has been great this whole beta cycle. I can only have high hopes for the actual full release here to keep that going. So I know it's not that exciting. No point dragging on this video. Let me know what you guys think. Are you underwhelmed? Are you okay with this update? In those comments down below. But for now, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.